yeah, I don't have a lot else to add. Um, if there's a Saba bull who wants to try to make a claim uh, as to why they're bullish, I'm happy to hear it out and I'm happy to debate. But you know, I promise I won't stoop to any ad hominems. I stick to the data. But uh, I think that it's crickets and silence because you know it's just very, very hard to defend um, this this sort of situation. Maybe a niche is a bull. Hey, hey, Marty. Uh, hey, how are you? Good, how are you? Hey, good, good. Uh, so I, uh, I'm a software engineer. This is my first biotech investment. I'm a, uh, I'm going purely based on chat GPT and I'm not putting uh, all of my life savings on it. Uh, it's a small but substantial amount. Uh, so I did spend a lot of time researching on it. I relied a lot on chat GPT to fact check things, right? Um, so what I found is uh, there are like arguments that you're making like uh, the mechanism of action and uh, issues with the foundational research. What I found is like there is a lot of other things that substantiated works like the TR Fred essay and uh, the biomarkers were uh, verified by contracts and then the Pender uh, Susan Hendricks uh, was saying like it's um, it's like uh, unheard in like uh, in Alzheimer's that like patients get stabilized. Uh, so uh, that's on the uh, on the mechanism of action. Now uh, I understand your point on phase two B. It's cherry picked, but it's only a twenty eight day trial, right? So I don't know even if it worked. Uh, I'm <laughs> if if Kasawa's argument was like, hey, it worked on twenty eight days. We are able to stabilize patients. I'm not going to put my money on that. It's a progressive long-term disease, right? You need to see like six months, one year or two year studies to uh, see the actual results. So, yeah, I mean, uh, it's a safety study and we have uh, other open label and like we have more confirmation that the drug is safe. Um, then, uh, okay, you, uh, I understand you don't give a lot of value on the open label uh, studies. Uh, so my question is like, is it so easy for you to find like mild and uh, uh, medium Alzheimer's patients and uh, 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 create like uh, they don't have Alzheimer's and like have them be stable for two years and kind of like we have FDA, CC, everybody investigating them. So if I am the investigator, first thing I'll be checking is, hey, is these patients are actually mild or are they frauding the investors? Uh, right. So I, I, they, 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 they have their MMC score. They have their ASCO scores that kind of confirms their, uh, where they are in the mild or medium Alzheimer's. So I, I was debating with all the short arguments and the bull arguments with chat GPT and I'm getting like more than 50 percentage or for success. And like you confirmed, like if it's successful, it's a 50x uh, winning. So it's worth putting some money there and like roll the dice. Uh, why uh, now? To, uh, uh, my question is like, what are the biggest holes? Like uh, why you think it won't work or like why am I wrong here? Yeah. So, I mean, I have a lot of experience. I bet. Um, a lot of money over the long run on binary events, over a billion dollars, um, and that's personally, in aggregate bets over a long period of time. And I made a lot of money doing this. Um, I haven't been right every single time, but I think people on Wall Street who are professionals know my reputation. Um, earlier, I saw somebody in here who's a top Wall Street hedge fund manager who's maybe the only couple of people on Wall Street who I put, point to as maybe even better. And, you know, it's, it, this is not like within the realm of even possibility. So I'm just sort of talking about my track record for a second, but let me talk about the arguments. Um, so the strongest argument I would say is the lack of clinical effectiveness. So you cannot cherry pick data. And I think you're, can you just go on, on mute real quick because I'm getting a lot of feedback from your side. Um, thank you. So 
I think you're smart enough to know that if you look at a distribution of data that you cannot simply decide that you like one part or one half of the distribution and that you don't like the other half and that therefore the half that looked better for you, you're going to stick to that half. It's kind of capricious, right? It's sort of yeah, like... Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, uh, as I said, right, I'm completely ignoring the face to be. I don't care whether it's success or failure. Because what that just an added weight, weightage, right? If you are like saying, okay, hold on, going hold on. by completely by face to be, I completely agree. Right. You need, let me let me let me interrupt you for a second. What if you don't have clinical efficacy, how do you bet on a clinical trial result being successful? Totally. Uh, so that's why, like, they did the uh, context, redid the analysis, and they. Uh, so you, we can argue, that, that's not but clinical. it's only that's on a twenty-eight day. That's uh, not clinical outcome, right? Mm-hmm. The clinical outcome. So, if I understand correctly, uh, you're saying it's like that 28 day study. That is what was most important here. No, that, both, that's, mm-hmm. both, both, both the 28 days, which the SEC showed us that. Mm-hmm. If you read, I don't know if you read the SEC lawsuit, but. Yes, I did. They showed that the drug actually was not working. And then after she changed the data and manipulated it, it was working. Um, and she never told us that she changed to manipulate the data. So that's that trial that did not do well. And then the control withdrawal trial did not do well either. That's where the whole mild, moderate kind of attempt to respin the data applies. So those are the two pieces of clinical evidence. Then there's biomarkers, which is not clinical outcomes evidence of Alzheimer's. It's just measurements of fluid. And then there's the preclinical, which is, again, is even further away. That's just playing around with lab tools and mice and stuff. Um, but there's huge data that's important in prognosticating this is clinical outcomes. Did the people get better or not? And in two phase two randomized controlled trials, they both showed no effect. But the, the second dangerous. study was completely like it's a withdrawal study. So it, it, I, I get to your point. If uh, right here, uh, Kasawa's argument is it's a uh, they, the, the patients were on simophilim, and if their mechanism of action is correct then you will agree, right? Those patients actually had their, it's a disease-modifying drug. Well, so hold, on, you, hold on, hold on, hold <laughs> on. So when you give a drug and you take it away, the effect should go away. Um, is it, uh, if it's a, a disease-modifying, do you No, think? I don't think it matters. That, that's, Does it matter? I've never seen that in my career. You know, if you can point to me another drug where you can stop taking it and the drug keeps going, it keeps working even though it's not in your body... I would love to see that. And so I, here they are oh, saying it's like they're, fi- they're, they're fixing the misfolded, uh, filament, right? And then if they- Well, once you, if you take the drug away, it'll, it'll, it'll fold back into its original shape. See, is it immediate? Yeah. Yeah. It's thermodynamics. Uh, we, that's where I, I was, uh, like uh, having that debate with chat GPT and like, uh, it's not like that. Right, uh, you you have more experience. This is my, as I say, right. I am not a biotech investor, so. Well, uh, I would say this: like, you can't make the, me or like make a good argument. So I can go put in the. On the on, no, that's that's fine, and I'm I'm not an impolite person until somebody is impolite with me. So I totally respect the way you're coming at this. But here's one more thing to think about: is in folding proteins, which, by the way, very 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 few drugs work this way. Like the amount of drugs that work by refolding a protein is exquisitely small. It's like two or three out of 1,300 novel molecules approved. And they did not really design this drug to refold. And there's no publication of their chemistry. To make a refolding drug, like the big one that that I'm familiar with is Vertex's drug. The Vertex clinical trial, um, sorry, the Vertex team that did this, I actually hired three of them. Uh, way back when I was the CEO of a drug company, it is extremely difficult and a, almost a miracle that they got this drug to work and they got to publish over and over again dramatic results of preclinical work in journals like J Medchem and other sophisticated journals. This never happened and Dr. Wang is not even a chemist. They don't have a chemistry team at all at Cassava. So like this whole thing is a little bit mysterious how they're able to do this. There's no crystal structure. In drug industry, this is like in software engineering, like having a version control. Um, this is like elemental. Like there's no crystal structure. So if I understand is- correctly, like uh, you're saying like the placebo, even though they had a drug, uh, like a uh, uh, disease-modifying drug, 
they will immediately that's, that's, be I, back I, into that like same placebo kind of uh, yeah situation. i i think you're is i that, think that's correct i mean i think this whole disease modifying thing is very suspicious so again i would encourage oh yeah you if it's a fraud right I, i this is my own kind of either it's a fraud or it works so if i believe right, if it's a fraud argument then yeah you're right uh, this is everything all these things are sham i'm wasting my money but if there uh, if the other side is correct so this is modifying then uh, i don't get it right it, it's like well uh, why if, 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 if it was disease modifying there would be a big difference the control trial would have worked so if if for example in that 6 month period with mm-hmm. drug first placebo we know that in in this in this drug that the p value is not statistically significant that the trial failed and yeah because the placebo didn't decline like as uh, as you expect like a normal placebo like uh, on a mild or medium will decline right because uh, the the bull argument but, but is but hold on the 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 moderate patients were declining rapidly that's true uh, i think it's the mild that's where the uh, <laughs> well how, how, why didn't they know this ahead of time you know to me I, they saw the data yeah, and they said Let's, i mean if it was successful we would all be right i won't be investing it it would have already be valued like right i don't know like 500 what are it is it, I right? can't, there are a lot of questions and we have a well hold on hold on i right? i cannot find a professional biopharma investor who is bullish on cassava so there are people like me and and i'm just one of thousands who get paid who at least at one point in my career got paid for a, for a living to look at drug companies and decide how to take pension pension funds and wealthy individuals and invest in biotech for them for a fee and those funds are very large and very well known there's baker brothers there's uh eco r1 and it goes all the way down there's like 50 of these funds that have a billion dollars or more i don't know mari i i don't give it like much weightage because i, I was with tesla and like most of the wall street was against them when they were like sure. trying to scale and like they it will never work it's so easy but there were some the people other. bailey <laughs> bailey gifford was very bullish on tesla um many other firms but but i can't find a single person who likes cassava and when you add that to all this other stuff i'm talking about it's okay. i i, I want to discuss one more thing okay i i get it okay i give some weightage for that too okay there is indian of scientific evidence and uh scientific backing from other people, other reputed people right that's a good point that's why chat gpd was not giving it the highest rating because one was like the 98 percentage failure ratio and that's right 98 percent yeah off the bat then you have every wall streeter saying no way i'm willing to pay 100 percent apr to short the stock totally. that's how convinced i am and then you have the ceo has to resign just months before the trial results because the SEC is suing them for fraud you have the scientists getting arrested i mean it, it, it's so common i i don't it, i mean you must this, go, like find this stuff, like this it, stuff. It, it, it's you, you know if you know SEC they they will come up with any charge and they will try to settle it this stuff so, does not happen normally i've never heard of a drug executive getting indicted for faking trial or, uh, for faking the, the problem is if i am objective i can't give that a weightage in my analysis right like i'm taking this mechanism of action the open level study the phase 2b study those are the things i'm giving like a weightage on right uh, okay the, there there was a settlement we don't know for sure whether it was good or bad right whether they actually did the, we don't have any proof on that so uh, okay if you want to make an argument that they are actually fraud yes good well, but hold on. Uh, if mm-hmm. if you see the the western blot the the experiment was done Mm-hmm. you can see in the photoshop that he flipped the image and then stretched the image and so like i don't think the accusation that the government is making and i've had my own trouble with the us government i don't think the accusation they're making could possibly be wrong because you can see his fraud right there it's like so he, tell me if, then uh, how is it's it's as like, if, i mean it's as if he yeah, drew a pic- okay go ahead uh, i agree let's say Uh, then how does he manipulate that tr fraud uh, assays like th- that both needs to match right but they didn't say okay yeah he did also manipulated the tr fraud why didn't they do that so the fraud the fraud assay is not meaningful so what what anybody would normally want to see here is is a crystal structure that this drug actually binds its target a crystal structure is about $50,000 
it does not cost a lot of money to, to take a crystal and say, here is where my drug makes a binding to this protein. And they mm-hmm. never did that. That's the experiment everyone wants to see. And this is yeah, like yeah. This, fundamental. This is a $1 billion company. So the, it's like, and we are there still trying to figure out, right? So if it works, that's how uh, you will see more uh, proof on all this mechanism of action. Everything. No, you have to do that experiment before you invest. As a, as a person who's made a billion dollar drug company uh, himself, this, uh, this is like the first thing you do before you start investing tens of millions. You want to say, mm-hmm. does my drug actually interact with this protein? Yeah, I was reading this, uh, the Western blot, it's very error prone, right? That, this is, uh, uh, you have more experience on that. I don't have any experience, but this is what I get from my research. It, it depends on a lot of how you load the data. It's very error prone. And I read like a lot of other researchers were also into trouble because either it was like, uh, the Western blot is not correct. Uh, there is a lot of studies, and that doesn't mean all those researchers are fraud. Well, the rest, Western bot is just one tool, and it doesn't really speak to the drug side of it. It's just on the protein side. So mm-hmm. it's a tool to interrogate biology, whereas on the drug side, on the chemistry side, you want to know that your drug is sticking to the protein. And without a crystal structure or some other in, unambiguous kind of like – the crystal structure is nice because it's like literally a photograph – it's like, I have the culprit. I caught him red-handed. He's binding to the drug at uh-huh. this exact spot. And then the chemists use that molecular information to say, okay, let me add a fluorine here. Let me add a methyl group here. Let me add a, you know, it would be really good if there was a, 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 a benzene right here. It would work out really well for space filling or for PK or for any adjustments. And then you publish it. And they've never done that. <laughs> and if you look at who did the chemistry for this, it's two people on a patent that was outsourced. And it's mm-hmm. very, it's very weird to me how this drug came to be. And again, it's not common for, for a scientist to get arrested. If, if it happened every day, it happens every day in hedge funds. But I've never really heard of this. And the Western blocks you can see were just copy, paste, invert, stretch, photoshops where it was like, dude, you obviously made this up. And if he's making up the Western blocks mm-hmm. and the, and that you have, uh, Dr. Burns making up the phase two data, according to the SEC, what else are they making up? Like, I mean, I, I would have been here? more convinced, uh, right? Uh, if it was, what was their, what, what will be their motive to just get some research fund and then continue the research? I mean, that sounds so like for Burns and, uh, uh, and Remy, right? What I think it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's just to it's get a, a few more years on their company. Yeah. I mean, you know, they did this. So I met Remy 20 years ago and he was my boss's college roommate. And he had three pain drugs. The company was called Pain Therapeutics. Mm -hmm. And they all failed. And he was the laughing stock of Wall Street and pharma. And then he gets simifolam. And then it fails again. And he basically, his ego says, I cannot be the laughing stock again. You know, this is too much. Everything I do has failed in pharma. 25 years of my life trying to run this company is a zero. But uh, why why, why would, like, okay, uh, if I take your argument, if he goes to phase three, the drug doesn't work, it will fail spectacularly. He will be laughing stock, right? What is he trying to achieve by extending these trials? I mean, if he was selling all his stocks along the way and making a lot of money, uh, I wouldn't have been in this. I think it's self self delusion. I think it's they they looked at the phase two and said, "How mm-hmm. can we? We can't almost like can't accept another loss." And it's this mental blindness of like, how do we make this like? look good or, oh, it's really successful. If you look at it this way, it actually worked Mm -hmm. out. And it's a lack of objectivity. Sometimes in my own work, I look at something, I make something, and I say, isn't this great? Maybe it's a piece of code. I show it to my colleague, and they say, oh, no, this is actually worse than the reference standard algorithm this much better. (laughs) You you just wasted a bunch of time here, just use this, and I feel stupid. And sometimes in those situations, you'll say, no, 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 I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, look at this. And it's very embarrassing to say, shit, I got it all wrong. And I messed this up. And he rebranded the whole company to Kasaba. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can buy all those things. Uh, I, I mean, but why? If he knows the drug doesn't work, why take all this pain and go through like two phase three trials? And then he will be like biggest laughing stock. I think he I should think be like, people... okay, if he is a smart person, he should be like uh, selling all the stocks and it's high, taking all the money out. And then, uh, well, he's getting a salary. 
What's that? He's getting a salary. He's getting a bonus. He's that, getting. I mean, I don't listen, know. it's not. It's not nothing. And he's getting the ego fulfillment of being in charge. He buys this big building, right? Wastes the shareholders' money buying this big building. He employs his wife. His whole family's tied up in this now. You know, so I think when things got bad, he just sort of said, you know, maybe maybe I like to just interpret it a different way. And, of course, I don't think he planned on defrauding the Phase 3. I think if the Phase 3 failed, he would have said, all right, look, it didn't work out. That's how biotech is. I'm going to keep going. I don't think he's a bad guy. But I think the Phase 2 uh, was just kind of like generous interpretation. Hey, uh, okay, so I have another question. Like, uh, did you read that, like... Uh... They had the, uh, they did the analysis and the, on the biomarker, they said like the AB42 increased by, uh, 74%. Uh, did you read that? Uh, I don't know if, uh, like it was on one of the phase two studies and there was no questions by anybody on that. But recently, uh, Dr. Epse and his team, there was a report that came up from them that saying like, uh, the Alzheimer's cognitive stabilization is due to the increase in uh, AB42. The MAP drugs, uh, some of them actually helped increase AB42. That's why there is a cognitive stabilization. I thought that was a compelling argument, and there were like no short short arguments saying that okay, that biomarker data is uh, not right. If they be 42, like they're saying, like it's increased by 74 percentage, and then the now the report come up, like they be 42 is a uh, uh, major factor in uh, uh, stabilizing the cognitive decline. I think that's huge. What do you have to say about that? A couple different things. So one, I don't really trust anything from this company, and then two, the weight of biomarker data when you already have available clinical data, you, you would weigh the biomarker data basically as meaningless compared to the gravity. It's not meaningless in a vacuum, but to the gravity of clinical data, I would say it's meaningless. And then I would say just about the biomarkers themselves, like you need a plausible reason to believe that this drug would interact with physiologically to change uh, biomarkers in the first place, which, you know, you can't get a drug approved. You cannot get a drug approved on biomarkers. So... To me, it's just kind of like uh, hard to hard to understand it. And then, if if it worked so well, you would have seen it in the medium or the moderate mm-hmm. patients. And the moderate patients did terribly. They weren't getting disease modified. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it, I mean, if to get the drug approved, right? They have it. Uh, they are doing the study on both mild and moderate separately. So they just need to get it done on uh, any one of those groups. So, uh, but if they yeah, believe the, if they, if they there, believe, there is, I get your point. If they believe, right. mm-hmm. if they believe the mild moderate difference was real, they could have just made the drug mild only. No, they are. It, it's uh, what I understood is like it's stratified, and it's they are doing two uh, control group studies. There is mild and moderate. No, so moderate there's is trial, in... but it is. Uh, uh, it's div- uh, it's divided in two subgroups. So if you, why would you do any moderate if your drug doesn't work in moderate? We know the drug because doesn't work the, in moderate. Because they think it might work. So what, what is it? Wrong? Didn't work in phase two. I mean, what is uh, is that? Are you making an argument saying that they are? Uh, if it doesn't work in moderate, uh, the drug is not effective, or like no, no, I'm saying, saying that like you... uh, the, those subgroups are not correct, or you do a phase. The reason you do a phase two trial is to see if you want to pursue a phase three, which is long and expensive. Mm-hmm. So they did a phase two trial. And of course, I don't think the drug works at all. But their story, their narrative is that it works in mild. OK, if you believe that, just do a trial of moderate and uh, mild. In fact, I would do extreme mild. I would not even think about a patient that was moderate or even towards the moderate end of mild, I would go so early in Alzheimer's disease, they barely had it. But instead, they said, you know, we'll say moderates too, whatever. It's like, wait, you just told me that it doesn't work in moderates, but it works in mild. Why are you taking moderates in the trial? Hmm. Okay, Yeah, that's an interesting uh, point. But I, what I understood is uh, the trial is, uh, it, it's it's stratified. It's, uh, it's two different groups. 
uh, you as can long as you get the uh, but... stat significant in any one of the group, you're good. If you no, are good no, on four, no way, no way. You need to meet stat sig in the entire population. Okay, uh, it, it, that's not what I understood. Uh, no, 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 no. I, I've done clinical trials for a long time, and I concede if they meet stat sig, it'll be a one thousand dollar stock. But you cannot say unless you say mm -hmm. my primary. You have to define one primary endpoint. You mm -hmm. have to say. And in statistics, I'm sure at some point you probably took a class in statistics. A lot of people have forgotten it, but you have alpha spend. You have one alpha spend of 0.05. You can split it into two primary endpoints, but now your alpha is 0.025 for each. You can do a hierarchical statistical analysis where you say, after my primary endpoint, I carry over my alpha and I preserve my full alpha to the next endpoint. But you cannot say my primary endpoint is all comers, mild and moderate, and I no, am... They didn't say that, right? It's like they have to... Well, they don't even have... We don't know what their statistical analysis plan is because they haven't yeah, even gotten it from If they are smart, they will, uh, they will uh, do that, right? They will say, okay, yeah, we are doing it uh, separately again, and combinedly and then... Sure, so it. they say, tell the FDA the moderate is not part of our trial. Cool. They can do that. I still no, believe it. they are saying like, okay, we are testing. But not part, when I say that, I, just be clear, not part of our primary endpoint. Uh, okay. Because uh, uh, why, why would you want correct, right? I, I, I don't it, know. It's very, hard, it's very hard to meet statistical significance anyway. So why would you put poison yourself by saying our primary endpoint is ADESCOG change versus placebo from baseline against all comers? I would just say it's against mild only. And uh, we can do another secondary endpoint after the fact for, um, you know, a different uh, endpoint after the primary endpoint. But you get one chance in the primary endpoint. And it, everyone will tell you, if you fail primary endpoint, you got to do your trial all, all over again. Yeah, yeah but, but uh, it, it, we don't know how, how is the statistic, uh, SAP, right? It, it could be into different groups. So we can argue, but we don't know how it – and there are drugs – which are approved if it's uh, working on one, uh, no, one subgroup, not, as long as it's, uh, it's there on the SAP, right? It's not a No, as long as it's their system. primary endpoint. I don't think there's been any drugs where you've been, you can throw out half the patients that didn't work and say, oh, no, it works in these patients, so just to prove it in these patients. FDA doesn't work that way. You have to specify beforehand which is your primary endpoint, and you have to meet it. You can't say, I'm going to try it all, and then whatever endpoint hits, I will just get approval for that. Let me repeat what you said. Like, let me, so you're saying it's like they, uh, in, for this drag, even though they cannot say it is like it works only on mild or only on uh, more right. And have, what is, yeah. Uh, what is your reasoning for that? Because even if they say that, okay, we, this is our SAP and we are going to do some group analysis for this, it doesn't matter. That's, uh, your thing is like it needs to be for the entire patient population that's going you, to study. You must specify a a priori before the results, a priori, a primary endpoint with how much alpha you want to spend on the primary endpoint. You can specify two or three primary endpoints, but you must split the alpha between them. So can they do uh, in the SAP, say that, okay, this is my primary endpoint on mild, yeah. and this is my primary endpoint on moderate, Well, this is my primary endpoint on combined? Can they do like that? Yeah, you can. So what you'd have to do in that case, and, and keep in mind that if you fail one of them, it'll be very weird that your drug worked in these people but not these people, but it's plausible. I think the FDA would say, Hey, you know, there's a way to do this. It's, you can do two different trials, right? Why, why put them all in one trial if you didn't mean to enroll <laughs> milds or moderates? Just, you should have done one trial with moderate milds and one trial with moderates. Yeah, but, you could take that argument. Yeah, but they, they could have done like, uh, the rethink and refocus on like, or like that. Like they could have done two different studies on one for mild and one for moderate. Yeah, they, that's they the way they should that. have done it. But irrespective, you can, you could say, that our co-primary endpoints mm. are mild and moderate. But typically with co-primaries, you actually have to hit both. If you fail one co-primary, you fail the entire analysis. 
I so mean, for me, if I'm an Alzheimer's patient and there is a proof that works on mild. That's not uh, proof though. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, as long as they can, like, they have it in their SAP, right? It's not a Yeah, you, you have to say ahead of yeah. time. I hope they're smart enough to say that. Well, uh, I think that the best chance they would have is just say our primary endpoint is mild patients only. We are not statistically going to even look at the moderates because they failed in phase two. So why would we look at it in phase three? I mean, and, it depends on how you look at it. Uh, that's where, like, for them. All right. They are thinking it's a disease modifying. It works on both mild. But the, right? the, it might, right? I, I get your argument. This is completely a fraud. It doesn't mean, it doesn't work. It's not going to work on anybody. Right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think it's, this is an interesting, I, I see an ode on this based on like, I put all your, uh, these arguments. Right? I think mostly I knew. Uh, well, like, let me ask you another question just to, go a completely different direction. Sure. How many how many biotech trials like this have you looked at in your life? Uh, as I was saying, this is my first one. Nope. And I'm relying That's completely fine. on uh, chat GPT and like on all, uh, I uh, I compared it with all the uh, math have you, studies and all, right? Uh, have you ever so, played poker or any other oh, games? Oh yeah, I love poker. That's yeah, so like, my you, old fear. <laughs> when, you, when you play, I play a lot of poker too. When you played your first hand of poker, were you as good as the one that you're playing now? No, this, I swear, I, I, when I learn, like, I'm studying more, I'm feeling more convinced. Like, I have a pocket thesis. And I'm saying, uh, yeah, I, uh, I should be betting more. That's the kind of feeling. I'm like restraining myself. But over don't, time, don't put more money on it. Over time, you got more skilled as you played more poker hands. You learned more about the game. You got a little bit better at it. Your first poker match was probably terrible. Same thing in chess. The first time you learned how to play chess, you weren't that great. This is your first ever binary event. My first one was in 2001, um, 23 years ago. I mean, I think it's just prudent to bet a small amount, learn, and if you are good at binary events and you're right, the next time you do one of these, and there will be many more to come over the next 20 years, big drugs with big binary events, you can make a big bet then. But why with your first one, would you? Yeah, I'm not uh, betting my house on it. Uh, okay, I'll be disappointed if it doesn't work. But uh, yeah, I mean, the life goes on. It's not like I'm putting all my wealth on this stock. It's like I think other but people it's are. But it's substantial. I have like a, uh, yeah, more than uh, ten thousand in stocks and options on it. But it's not like uh, no. I understand that everyone huge. has to make their own choice. But I just yeah. think I just think every time uh, the first time I played chess, first time I play basketball. I, you should see how I was throwing the basketball. I was the worst looking basketball player ever. And then I ended up playing really well because I trained really hard and got better at it. And this is no different from any of those. I mean, if it's your first time ever looking at a clinical trial, you right. learn. One of the things I learned is that open label data is meaningless and useless. That without a control group, you will, you will never be able to determine how a drug worked and that you value the control group data a hundred X more powerfully than the uncontrolled data. The next thing I learned is patient and doctor testimonies mean absolutely nothing. I mean, I've had doctors tell me, Martin, I've never seen a drug like this. It's amazing. I can't believe how well it did. And it's no different from placebo. So uh, do you think like uh, the, the uh, people, like the, like they're saying like they're 200 patients, right? On the open label. And they had like the uh, cognition stable for 24 months. That is like, uh, I mean, only mild how, patients, how you, only mild you, patients, only mild patients. Yeah. How, how do you define like, it's not like, yeah, yeah. You're a lot. You're just saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a big mm -hmm. deal. Yeah. You're throwing, my, you're in throwing, my, out, you're they, throwing they, out half the people. What's that? You're throwing out the worst half and saying the best half is looking good. No, Why no. In the mild. How, uh, yeah. In you, the best. Hold on. It, you're basically saying in the fastest runners, they ran fast. It doesn't make sense. It would be impressive if all of the patients were stable. That'd be amazing. Yeah, uh, help me understand this, uh, Martin. Like, is there any study or uh, uh, how, how you manipulate this? Like, you take some mild uh, Alzheimer's patients and give them this drug for 24, any drug for 24 months. Can you stabilize their ADAS Cox score? Yes. Yes. Selection bias. That's why there's a control group. Yeah. I, I was arguing with Chad GPD on that. Raider like, bias. I, 
plus, uh, there is a placebo effect. There is selection bias. There is like all different sort of radar, things, radar observer bias. I mean, nothing these... lasts for twenty four months. Sure, if, I if they, tell unless you. like but you're, you're only looking at half the data. What do you mean by half the data? I didn't get that you're that. only looking at mild. What happened? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell me, like, can it? What, can you stabilize? Even if you just take mild, yeah, yeah, how you do you do like that. You're, using you're, the selection you're, bias? You're, like, on you're, an you're, the answer is yes, but you cannot simply take the better half and say, "Look how good this better half is doing." I'm going to ignore the the worst half. Do you think that there's a drug? Let me ask you this: Do you think there's a drug where if I answer a question right on the Alzheimer's test, the ADAS Cog test, and there's a line? Where after 24 points, my drug doesn't work at all. But at 24 points and below, it works really, really well. Does that make sense to you? I mean, it, it, it would have a different effect on mild and moderate. I, I, I feel Not like really. it's like I, cancer. Really. Like, for example, if you take cancer, what I understood is you have different stages and your drug or whatever treatment you do, it depends on like how early you some, detect. And, some, like, drugs, treat, right? some drugs work that way. Yeah, These so days, like why Keytruda, can't this be like that? Well, Keytruda, most, almost every drug in medicine does not work that way. Almost every drug in medicine, no matter how severe you are, it will help you. Cancer is a weird exception to the rule, but it's an exception. All the other drugs that I'm aware of, if you, um, if you have a little bit of allergies and you take an allergy pill, you will get relief. If you have a lot of allergies and you take an allergy pill, you will get relief. Um, if you have pain and you have really severe pain, opioids will help you. If you have a little bit of pain, opioids will help you. Almost every medicine works this mm-hmm. way. And here, they're saying there's a magic light switch. And this is if you already believe and trust the data in the first place, which I do not because it has not been published in any journal whatsoever. At least Tesla, look, people were skeptical, but they had revenue and they had patents and they had like some amount of official stuff. And they had some shareholders. It was a minority, you're right. But Bailey Gifford was very bullish on Tesla, many other smart people. Um, so here, they've never published this data because, therefore, I don't think you can even trust it. But even if you take what they said at face value, they're basically saying after MMSE score of 24, if you're 25, drug won't work for you at all. But if you're 23, it's a magic pill. Come on. It's, uh, it's ten to, uh, right on the mild uh, for the uh, ten to twenty, and like, uh, oh, uh, but does it make sense that know. twenty I, nineteen works, but twenty one is failing? For for me, it makes sense because the, it's too class. It's like I will con- uh, compare like a, a cancer like early or like you're late, and in this case, like you're mild, you have like a well, actually a, for many for many cancers that that whole idea that like mild and moderate is different is now gone. Like Keytruda works for all cancer patients, mild or last stage, early adjuvant, like before they even spread tumors, it's, it stops the tumor from spreading. And even after they have metastatic disease, it works. So not every cancer drug works that way. So basically you're looking at explaining to explain this drug. You have to jump through so many hoops. You have to say that I'm going to pick the one disease where medicine doesn't work this way out of, 99% 99% of the surface area of medicine, mild, mm-hmm. moderate, doesn't make a difference. But there is 1% of surface area of medicine where, yes, the stage of the disease matters. And you have to pick that 1% for this narrative to make sense. And then you have to also believe that the guy getting arrested, the SEC stuff, all of that doesn't make sense. Then you also have to believe that filament is a logical protein in this situation which it is Mm -hmm. not, in my opinion, then you have to believe that the mild-moderate distinction is relevant. So, I mean, to me, it's just too many hoops to jump through to, like, the simplest answer is the drug just doesn't work. Yeah, I I can see your argument, right? You can say, okay, yeah, the it's completely, uh, the MO is uh, the, uh, completely fraud. They cooked up the whole thing. They, the phase two beats cherry picked. It doesn't work. And then they, uh, they manipulated like the whole oily, right? So, uh, you can definitely make a case for uh, like this completely doesn't work. But the, if you look uh, through it, I see a lot of other data points that says it works. Do you see any? Uh, like, this is also do you your see first, any data points also... where it works? Uh, no, like, I, mean, I don't actually. You don't? I do not. And, and this is also your first rodeo, right? Like, yeah, yeah, this is, might be my first and last. I mean, it I might see be your last. Exactly. That's the, that's the, I hope you make money, first of all, because I don't want anyone to lose money. But 
I mean, I think... on the on the biotech world, I don't understand the biotech. But uh, I'm just going I... through chat GPT. This is my experiment, right? So, so let's go through chat GPT. Let's no, no, it's a, honestly let's smart. See how it works. Smart thing to ask chat GPT. I spent a lot of time in LLMs and in PyTorch yeah. making models. It's it's very useful, but. 20, 21 years, I've been publicly shorting stocks. And each time I do this, I meet somebody like you who's very smart, very successful in their competency. And they say, what about this? Does this work? And I say, no, you're really, you know, you're kind of barking up the wrong tree. This is going to work. And they say, well, I'm so smart in these other areas. I'm smart in this area. And they try it, and they're wrong, and they say, never again. I'm never going to do this again. So that's I mean, called, hold on, let me finish. 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 Yes, that right. is called gambling. If you want to get a proficiency, a serious proficiency in this field, you would chart a 10-year course where you say, I'm going to bet 0.5% of my capital on this. Because guess what? Cassava is not unique. There's 2,000 publicly traded biotechs. They will all have binary events that will go up 10x, 20x, 50x, etc. Many of them will go down 99%. You can make money on shorting too. And Next trade, if you got the first trade right, great. Next trade, you put 1% of your portfolio. Next trade, 2%. Next trade, 5%. And you will develop this proficiency. But that's not... Yeah. Really... <laughs> Tell me this. Uh, if, yeah. if the, if the yeah. stock goes down 99%, which is possible, will you never look at biotech again? I mean, most likely, unless I see another sour, uh, like, which can 50x and I... I go through it and I uh, uh, feel like, uh, oh, yeah, this looks like a good odds for me. Uh, at this point, uh, I mean, I, I will go back and, like, put your points and then see, yeah, does it change my weightage? Even if, like, it's 20%, 30% the odds, uh, I mean, it works. But, yeah, I get you. If it's, like, uh, uh, okay. one of the arguments that ChatGPT was saying is if you're a scientist, if you're, like, a rely on, like, go by just the uh, hard data, right? It is not a good, uh, it doesn't look good. Right. I totally. Well, because me, there, my cancer, other... there is a lot of allegations and like all these things, right? You, you can, you can email me anytime you want. Martin at dl.software. I don't have any like weird conflicts of interest or any personal vendettas here. So we, I want to let Florida Joe chime in if he wants. And it was a pleasure talking to you. Uh, th thanks, Mario. I appreciate it, man. I, I sure, and you can hang around if you want, but I just yeah. want to give other people a chance. Yeah. 